you know, one thing I remember with my son, who is quite, he's quite disagreeable by temperament which is actually a good thing as far as I'm concerned, although it, it brings its own challenges and so with my daughter, when she was misbehaving, she was pretty agreeable and, uh, you know, if she was misbehaving, I could basically just look at her and then she'd quit, you know, but my son, it was like, that, that was just nothing, you're looking at me, it's like, no, that's just not going to go anywhere, man <laughs> and so then I'd like tell him to stop and that really wasn't having much of an effect either, he'd just sort of maybe laugh or run away or whatever, I mean, he was a tough little rat and, you know, what I would do with him is, he would be doing something and I'd interfere and he'd get upset and, you know, angry and so then I'd get him to sit on the steps and I told him, and this is when he was about two I said, look, you're going to sit on the steps, that's time out, you're going to sit on the steps until you've got control of yourself and you can come back and be, and play the family game again I basically said, be a civilized human being and then you're welcome again and so he'd sit on the steps, it was so interesting to watch because he was just enraged, he'd sit there, like have you ever seen a two year old have a temper tantrum? It's really quite the bloody phenomena. If you ever saw an adult do that, you'd like, you'd call 911 right away. It's like, oh my God. And I've seen adults do that, you know, because people say with borderline personality disorder will have temper tantrums. And it's like, man, you want to be about 30 feet away from that person. That's for sure. It's really, but in kids, it's like, well, first of all, they're only this long, so how much trouble can they really cause? But it's like, you know, they're just completely gone. They're like, on the floor, their face is red, they're just furious, like way more furious than you ever get if you're even vaguely socialized, they're just outraged and they're kicking and hitting the ground and like, it's like a little epileptic fit of anger, you know, they're completely controlled by their rage and we took care of one kid for a while who, he was actually a pushover, that kid, you could get him to behave by, you know, kind of shaking your finger at him, but his mother thought he was really tough because he, he had her figured out and one of the things he would do is have a temper, temper tantrum and during the temper tantrum he would hold his bloody breath until he turned blue it's like, try that, like, you know, as, that's your homework go home, and, go home and have a temper tantrum and while you're doing it, hold your breath until you actually turn blue it's like, you won't be able to do it you don't have the willpower of a two year old, that's for sure that little varmint, man, he'd just have a fit and then he'd hold his breath and then he'd turn blue it was like, wow, that's that's amazing, and we would just like let him do it, and you know, he'd turn blue and everybody would be gone and he'd come out of it, you know, and it didn't work, so he just quit doing it, I think he did it like twice and he figured out, oh well, that's a lot of work for very little outcome, and you know, it's not like two year olds are stupid, they're, they're not stupid, they're probably smarter than you, but they're not civilized by any stretch of the imagination, and so anyways, back to my son I'd put him on the steps and he'd be like, just like enraged and, and trying to get himself together, you know and I'd wait a few, few and I got a strict rule, which was as soon as you're done, you're welcome again so it's completely under your control you, you get yourself calmed down, you come and talk to me again if you're calm enough so I like you, then you're welcome back in the family no grudge, nothing <laughs> And so, it's harder than you think, like people think they like their kids, it's like, don't be thinking that they're hard to like, they're little monsters, and they're very, very pushy and provocative and so lots of parents do not like their children, and they do terrible things to them their whole life so, it's no joke, and uh, it's very common, and you know, that was Freud's observation, fundamental observation that a lot of psychopathology is rooted in the family, and you can be sure of that, you know and when you hear about some mother who's done something terrible to her child, which happens reasonably frequently, you know perfectly well that she has very terrible capacity to discipline, the child's just provoked her and provoked her and provoked her and provoked her and provoked her, and it just happens to be a day where her new boyfriend left and she's quite hung over and she got fired, and it's like, that's the wrong day to provoke her, and then she does something that is not good, and you read about it and you think, well how could that happen, how could anyone do that? Well, that's how they do it, and so, and kids are very provocative, just like little chimps chimps will, the adolescents will like throw little pebbles and sticks at the sleeping larger males and bug them, and that teasing, which it is, that teasing turns into full-fledged dominance challenge behavior once the adolescent males get big enough to do it, and so when you're being provoked by a child, which they provoke you all the time, they're trying to figure out, well just 
where are you exactly? What happens if I do this? What happens if I do this? You know, and how else are they going to figure it out? Anyways, he'd sit on the steps and just he's just enraged and trying to control himself. And I'd watch that, and then you know I'd come back after about two minutes or whatever, and he'd still be. Urgh! I'd say, well, are, you know, have have you got yourself under control? Are you ready to get off the steps? And he'd go, no, not yet. <laughs> and then you know he'd get himself under control. And then he'd come back, and you know he'd be contrite, and then I would like him right away, you know, because you got to watch that, you know, because you don't like being dominated by a two-year-old. No one does, and so if the child hasn't mastered himself and started to act in accordance with the prevailing social norms, you won't like them. Well, you think, oh yeah, I will, because you know I'm a good person. It's like, no, you won't, and, and no, you're not a good person. So don't be thinking about that at all. It's just not true. So. When he was contrite, then he'd come and then, you know, we'd just go on like nothing had happened Because that's what you want to do, right? As soon as you get compliance, especially if the compliance is in the best interest of the child You want to reward it instantly, right? That's the right thing to do Because so then, and, and you could just see him gaining control over himself And so really what was happening is his, In his mind, in his brain, we'll say there was a war between the the psyche, the ego that was starting to become integrated, you know, and, and starting to become a continuous person, an identity And it's fragile in two-year-olds, and it can be disrupted all the time, and it is, that's why they're so hyper-emotional It's fragile, that little ego, and it doesn't have a lot of power And so what you want to do is reward it when it wins You know, it's when, it, when he gets control over the underlying motivations, you want to say, hey, good work, man, good work, kid You did it, you know, you got yourself under control, way to be And the kid's really happy about that, because it's actually not that much fun to have a temper tantrum It's exhausting, you know, it, it takes you over, 